present to you your host, Doreen of the O. of your show and to you lovely viewers out there thank you so much for tuning in but let me give a big shout out to my lovely audience here yeah. <laughs> and to you DJ extraordinaire DJ Varosky This is the Doreen Avio Show, and I have been joined by two amazing personalities. Now, let me tell you about the first guest seated right here. She's an amazing woman, but most importantly, she has been an educationist for the past 43 years. Where were you? <laughs> well, she has taught in quite a number of schools, and she now owns and actually runs her own school as well. She is in the person of Madame Alberta Mensa. <laughs> and so, my second beautiful guest, her name is Zenobia. While well, she's the CEO of Zenus Yoga, and she actually thinks children or students should have the freedom to keep their hair. <laughs> There's this huge debate out there as to whether students should keep or cut their hair. Hmm. I had to cut my hair to go to school. Well, let me start with Madame Albert Mensa. Uh, so how, does this, how did all of this start? Everyone is not really sure about how it started, but hmm. from what I've read, it looks like when they started the castle schools and uh, girls were asked to cut their hair, to distinguish between them and the um, guys, the mysteries. Okay. So that they could see that this is a true black person, and then this is a mysteries person. Wow. So this is what I have read. But before then, what I know is that Ghanaians, when you get to a puberty time, and they did the rate for you, they cut your hair. Wow. To introduce you to womanhood. Okay. So that one too was being done for the girls. So I think that is how maybe when we are going to the excess, you are supposed to cut your hair. Mm. Mm. Wow, yeah. this is interesting. Zenobia, I know that you're really passionate about this particular topic. <laughs> I mean, per what Madame Albert Mensa said, I mean, we all grew up to get to this stage to hear stories like this and now it's actually happening. Now we, everybody is asking questions. What happened? How did this start? Why are we here now? Actually, also don't really know why or how it started, but what I do know is there's no written law that states that hair should be cut. So as far as I'm concerned, every school decides and makes up their rules. So it's not like it's a national rule. It's based on each school and their decision. You think that students should actually do their hair? Would you yes. love your children to do that? Yeah, I, I had to cut my hair as well, but I don't think that it's a decision that should be made for students. Mm. Now, Madame Alberta Mensa, um, was it for government schools or private schools? It's actually not a rule from the GES. Okay. It's just a norm in the schools. So that is why there is difference. Some schools cut their hair, some schools don't cut their hair. So I think as uh, they started the schools with the mission schools and then private schools coming on board and all that, each school decided what they wanted. So it's not a rule, it's a norm. 
Wow. And as schools have their own rules in their schools, they put it in their prospectus. So when your child gets admission and you go for the form, then you find out that your child is supposed to cut their hair. Wow. So it, it, there is difference in most of the schools. Mm. Wow. Now, um, Zenobia, uh, I mean, I am asking this because I, it's quite, it's quite funny. Does it harm students in any way if you are to keep your hair and go to school? Does it affect your studies? What's, what, what is it at all? Okay, so for me, I think one of the main reasons why I'm against cutting of hair is because I don't think that whether a child has long hair or has short hair in any way affects their academics. And if you take even Ghana, for example, schools that kids cut their hair and schools that kids don't cut their hair, there hasn't been any significant, um, what's it called, difference in their grades. So for me, then all the arguments for kids cutting their hair doesn't hold because there's no evidence that shows that the kids in schools where we cut our hair perform better than schools that the kids don't cut their hair. Mm. And I also think that it does way more harm psychologically to these kids than good. If you're told right from an early age that in order to succeed and in order to do well, you have to cut your hair because somehow your kinky hair is too difficult to manage. But other kids, white kids, don't have to cut their hair to succeed. Mm. What are you trying to tell us? So with regards to uniformity, I'm of the opinion that at the end of the day, the world is in uniform. People are in uniform. So for you to be training kids to believe that there should be uniformity is a misconception. At the end of the day, if you train them to think that there's uniformity and they come out of the school system and realize that the world is in uniform, then what? So for me, they should be trained from an early age to understand that there isn't uniformity. And there isn't anything wrong with this. We're not meant to be uniform. Mm -hmm. And then with the issue of time, boarding schools and schools in general, but particularly boarding schools, are not institutions that are just meant to be for academic purposes. It's supposed to teach you about life in general. You're supposed to um, learn about grooming, how to take care of yourself, Time management is very important. When I was in boarding school, Saturdays and Sundays, you had free time. You could get to do whatever you wanted to do. So if we were allowed to keep our hair, that would probably be the time when we'll be washing our hair and braiding our hair. Maybe I'll braid for a friend. A friend will braid for me. Now, if I don't learn that time management there, when it's just studying and looking after myself, when am I going to learn it? Because when you come out of school, you start having kids, you get married, you work, and you still have to look after yourself and present yourself properly. So at the end of the day, shouldn't they be preparing kids for this? I know Madame Alberta Mensa wanted to come yeah. in here uh, because uh, there's something yeah. interesting you yes. need to Talking know. Talking about uniformity, <laughs> they, when they are going to school, they wear uniform mm. as well. So why their hair? Why is it that their hair shouldn't be the same? Mm. So it's important that they learn it. Then, then they do the, the same thing so that they will look uniform. Mm. And allowing them to do their hair, any hairstyle, some will go and do some hairstyles that are not appropriate. Some can even do hairstyle that will be touching their hair, their eye, and it will affect the eye in future. Yes, I remember when I was teaching a room marriage, anytime a child put on that hairstyle, we advise the parents to change the hairstyle. Mm. When I was teaching at Alcid Academy, they were allowed to do their hair, but it was all back. Okay. So it was uniform. Mm. Corn roll or back. back. If you change it, you go back and change it. <laughs> yes. So it, that's what the, being uniform is important for children. So you grow to a certain point. Even in workplaces, we have uniform, mm -hmm. which you have to abide by it. So it's good to teach them from the beginning. So I think... The time management, you should start from home. Those who will use timetable, all right, but it will be very difficult Ooh, for the teachers. It will be very difficult, Madame Alberta Mensa, and of course, beautiful Zenobia right here. Now, let's take a quick commercial break. When we're back, there's more here on the Doreen Avio Show. It's
Welcome back. It's still the Doreen of your show. <laughs> Woo, it's been an interesting conversation right here. And DJ Varoski. Doreen. Yeah, talking about her blocking students and, uh, mm. you know, some... Did you, you know Shaq, you know Shaq. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's that. You got any questions for them? I think I have one question for Zenobia. Mm. Mommy, I'll come to you. Let me go to you. <laughs> Zenobia, how are you? I'm good. How are you? You're always like looking good with the hair and all that. <laughs> okay, let me just stick to the script. Now, with the hair, I'm thinking that if everybody's allowed to do their hair in school, don't you think there'll be indecency in that I, mean, I have crazy friends like Rex? who just go and cut some galas, do some crazy hairstyle, because they're allowed to. How do we control that too? Don't you think it will take time? I mean, now teachers have to spend time trying to control the kind of hairstyle to bring to school and all that. What, what do you think? Okay. So, personally, I don't believe in control when it comes to things that have to do with your body. So, like... Um, Uniform is not something that's going out of your skin, but hair is going out of your, your skin, it's on your scalp. So I think that when it comes to things that are a part of you, it shouldn't have to be controlled. If someone has pierced their ear with one hole and another culture allows two holes, it doesn't mean the person is a bad person. I grew up with all these piercings from when I was six years old. So I think that the way we train kids and the way we make our society judge people based on their personal and physical appearance is something that needs to be untaught. So with regards to the hair, if someone wants to do something on top of their head, how does it affect anyone? <laughs> But with regards to it blocking someone's view, I get it. So maybe like what Alcid Academy is doing, you can just say, okay, everyone should do their hair all back so that it doesn't block your view when you're trying to write, so it doesn't um, disturb your eyes. So that's understandable. So you can say, okay, everybody braid your hair all back. Don't let anything come in front of your face. Don't do anything too big that it, it blocks the view of the person behind. That's fair enough. And then you can also say, if you are not able to maintain your hair, you're not able to keep your hair neat, then you will be obliged to cut your hair. But at least give them a choice. Mm. After three strikes, you cut your hair. Mm. That right. seems like a fair enough balance. Is your question answered? I think so, but I'm also thinking, this is just a, a little follow-up. <laughs> I mean, if we, are, we can't control that, and everybody else is supposed to do what they want to do, Maybe I'm the son of a fetish priest. I want to put beads in my hair. But how then do you go, if you are not controlling that, how then do you solve that problem? Too? So what I believe is that we need to train kids based on important things like values, not things like hair, piercings. These are all just things. This, this is not what makes someone's character. So when I, I, I'm not saying I don't want anybody to be controlled. If you're supposed to go to school, start classes at 8 a.m., you should still go at 8 a.m. I'm just saying that we need to focus more on things of substance. And physical appearance is uniformity. My nose is not the same as your nose. There's no uniformity. Mine is bigger. <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> Do you get it? Like, we don't look the same. So. There isn't uniformity there to begin with. Mm -hmm. That's all I'm saying, you know. But then you can still create some sort of rule to say, okay, don't let the hair be too big. Don't let it come in front of your face. Those rules you can justify. For me, if you can't justify the rule, it shouldn't be there. You can't justify why kids should cut their hair because some kids excel with their hair. So it's not, it's not on any scientific basis. Mm. 
Well, not with any scientific basis. And to my lovely audience, are you there? Yeah. Woo! Yeah. And now I have a question for you, or should I say you have a question for my guest? Do you have one for my guest? Yes. Hey, please, who would want to ask the first question? Okay. I have a man, please, ladies first. <laughs> All right, that's my beautiful lady there. Okay. Hello, good evening. Good evening. Um, my question is directed to Madam Alberta. So I realized you were talking about um, timeliness and then the uniformity the most. Um, but I want to know if it has this psychological impact on kids whether they leave their hair or they, or they cut it. Because growing up, I had to um, cut my hair. And then any time I cut my hair, I would look into the mirror and I'll be like, no, I look, I look like a boy too much. Why can't I leave my hair like my other peers are doing? So does it really have psychological impact on kids? Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I think it's up to parents who start educating their girl child, especially, to have that mindset that once I'm going to secondary school, I have to cut my hair. Because when I go to secondary school, I won't have that time to be doing my hair. And moreover, it's cheaper. All that you need is your comb and your hair. Your hair, hair cream. cream. <laughs> it's not every parent who can afford those luxuries. Yes, the wigs and all. Yes, that. for their kids. Mm. Looking at Ghana, I think the uh, second class people are few. Mm. We are not many as such. So if you have your comb and your cream for your child and she's going to school, she's fine. And for the psychological aspect that you are saying, it depends on us, the education we give them. Build their self esteem. Whether you have short hair or long hair, you are pretty. After all, we have women who have short hair, and they're pretty. They are. So we are rather educating them that when you have short hair, this thing is being forced on you. Meanwhile, you don't have time to be doing your child's hair for them. In fact, even the preschool that I have, I have to get a hairdresser to be doing their hair for them. Parents are too busy of late that they don't have time to be doing their child's hair. Wow. They come to school with their hair messy. They can, they can do the weave on, uh, sorry, the corn roll and those, but they are not doing it. Most of them. So now I've employed a hairdresser to come to the school every Friday and do their hair for them. Wow. It's the Darren Avia Show. It's the Darren Avia Show. Of your show. <laughs> now I know you all have been waiting for this segment, but it is right here. Now, if you are ready, let's give it together for Kwame UJ. What's up? I'm good. You're looking dapper. Thank you. I think, I, I don't know, for some reason, I, I think I'm loving this hair too. Everyone is loving it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Maraski, do you like the hair too? Don't give Kami Eugene a chance. Charlie, Charlie, Charlie. <laughs> we didn't come here to play. <laughs> we didn't come here to play. <laughs> wow. So, Kwame, have you been told about any interesting story about your birth in Fadama? No. I mean, I have to tell you. Oh. Because I was born in Fadama. Okay. So, yeah, I know more f about Fadama, so, yeah. Mm. Any story for me? I would like to hear more stories about Fadama. Um, 
Farama is what we call street. Mm -hmm. Farama is what we, you can call a hood. Mm. Farama is the ghetto. Farama is um, Farama is where where to become that that hard guy you want to be. And Farama is the hardest place me I know. Yeah, I've been to places, but Farama is the hardest place I know because I was raised there and I've been with friends who I can tell will never give up in life and nothing scares them mm. and also. Yeah. Wow. But you, were you raised or you were born there? Were you born there? Okay, I was born in the Eastern region, actually more than to be precise. Okay. But I was raised in Fadama. I was, I was just, uh, I was in Fadama when I was just three years. Wow. Yes, so I've been in Fadama all my life. Can you share with us some of your fond memories living in Fadama? Maybe um, <laughs> running around, <clears throat> jumping around, you know, maybe <laughs> chasing each, each other with... Um, you know, do you look at police? You don't, don't, don't do this. Yeah. It's, we don't do that around there. Just, okay. We take things like that. Sorry. Yeah. You know, Father, they don't do with yeah. They do roll knives, like uh, cutlasses and all that. Because of the perception out there. Our, our, it's, it's, our, it's, true. It's, it's real life there. We don't, we don't play it. <laughs> I mean, share with us your So memory. there isn't much fun memories in, in Farama because if I want to explain the kind of fun memory I've had, you will see it's fun. <laughs> yeah, because I've, I've tried explaining to people, and, and they go like, ah, you think this is fun? I would like to hear that. Are you sure? Yes. You tell us the crazy okay, moments. Okay, so you want even the crazy moments? Yes, even if they are not fun. Okay, because I've know. lived um, um, all my life there, so I grew up with, I mean, the, the goons and all of them. So if you want crazy moments, yeah, I've seen a lot of things. I've seen a lot of things. Because, yeah, that's where I come from. I mean, the fun part of Fadama is Salah time. Because we have the chief imam based in there, so um, and people tend to come to Fadama anytime it's Salah time. Yeah. And we have loads of people, people from all side of Ghana come all the way to come be the chief imam. We, we used to go there, like, oh, I mean, one week before Salah, we are always around the chief imam and having fun and all, praying and all. Whether you're Muslim, Christian, that's what Fadama is made of. Mm -hmm. Besides that, the fun part is the football, and we have a basketball which nobody is using. We have a basketball <laughs> Why don't court. They use it? <laughs> Who is going to play basketball? <laughs> we have a basketball court which no one is using, but we use the football courts because we have uh, some of the greatest footballers in the country coming from Fadama. Oh. And, and that is the fun part of Fadama. Okay. But the rest is hard life. I mean, okay. hard guy. I mean, yeah, you don't start a fight in Fadama because you can't finish it. Oh. Yes. In, you don't start a fight in Fadama and, and let it go. Mm. You have to be a winner and a loser. <laughs> you can't start a fight in Fadama and go like, you okay, me now I start, I stop. No. Did you ever get involved in any fierce fight in I Fadama? I like to fight. I'm from Fadama, I fight, wow. <laughs> if, if, if you're from Fadama, I mean, it's, 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 it's not being aggressive, mm. but standing for yourself, being able to hold what you have in our esteem is very important. Mm. You have to be respected okay. in any way. Mm. Did you if win? By taking it or, yeah, in any way, you have to be respected. So that, that comes with you being hard. Yeah. Did you win? Oh, you please, win I've, I've won lots of fights, but I've, I've been beaten too. <laughs> yes. Wow. Well. Mm, but if I can't if I can beat you, I have people to beat you. So <laughs> that's, that's where I come from. I will, I will fight. Mm. And if, if I see, I mean, psychologically, you can tell some people you don't fight them. <laughs> but the guy will beat you. He will beat you. But the fact that you can beat me doesn't make you a winner. Mm. This is Fadama. OK. OK. So if, if, if I check how strong you are, how muzzled you are, and I feel you are going to beat me, then it comes to who you know. Who do you know? Because I know a lot of people. <laughs> I was raised there. All these names I'm, I'm, I'm mentioning, I grew up with them. Wow. Then I'll ask you, who do you know? <laughs> Where do you live? Because <laughs> you are not sleeping tonight. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Kwame, you're known to be one star who loves to change his looks. Yes. Why is it so? Why do you keep changing your looks? I mean, one would have thought that uh, if it's a brand, then let's just take, let's stick to this look or that look. But you're so comfortable, and every time you change, it's like, why, why um, so? 
where I come from, you don't decide for me. <laughs> I, 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 I do what I like mm. because I came here alone. Do you understand what I'm yes. trying to say? My, my mom is the only person who can actually decide for me. Mm. My mom and probably my dad. Yeah. I mean, an, an almighty God. Okay. Because my mom actually gave birth to me, she carried me for nine months, so she has the right to, she has the right to spank me now and I'll keep quiet. Okay. Besides her, I'm past 20. Any decision I make in life now should be because I want to make that decision. Mm. It shouldn't be because someone somewhere won't be okay with it or someone feels I should look like this or wear this or put this on, jump, tie my hair, do a tattoo, do this. If I don't feel like doing it, you're not going to stop me. Does your mom love your earrings? Are those cowries? Yeah, yeah, they're cowries. Yeah. Does she love them? My mom is not an earring fan. I mean, she wears it, but if I wear it, it's not cool for her. But I, I, I'm, I'm able to convince my mom that I can actually take it off and put it on any time that I want. There you go. Okay. Oh. You get it. Mm. My mama said, call me one more. I said, no, 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 no. I can check it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so once it's like this and I can take it off in front of her, you know, moms, you're convinced. Oh. Yeah. yeah, okay. So now the new hair, this particular one, yeah. do you intend to keep it forever or maybe you change sometime? If, if I wake up tomorrow and I feel like changing it, I will change it. And nobody can stop. If, if I wake up tomorrow eh, and I feel like, yo, I don't want to be Miss V anymore, I'm putting natural hair. <laughs> I'm going to do it. That's it. Mm. When did you have your first girlfriend? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Look at my ask. In Fadaba. <laughs> At what age did you have your first girlfriend? I, I think when I was about, she, she wasn't a girlfriend. She was just a harassment. <laughs> she wasn't a girlfriend, she wasn't a girlfriend. Um, I, was, I was about 16. 16? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I, I was, I, I mean, you know where, where um, how my mom raised me, eh? <laughs> I used to be really scared of ladies. Mm. Like, like, yeah, really, really scared. Because my mom is that, we your papa, we your papa, don't do this, do that, don't do this, do that. So until you're about 22, 23, 24, 25, you don't have the right to decide for yourself. Mm. Even to choose a partner at that age, you don't have the right. Because I, I wasn't, yeah. So you're still scared of women? No. Mm. <laughs> uh, no. Well, have you ever had a worse dream? A worst dream? Yes, a dream that you woke up and you're like, what happened? Why would I even have this dream? I once had a dream. It was new artist of the year. It was myself, Kidi, I think Darko Vibes can promise, Kosia Takao songs. It was a tight competition. And two days before the awards, I had a dream that I didn't take the award. Ah. I woke up, I didn't feel good at all. Ah. I had to pray against all the boys. Ah. <laughs> Told my mom, say, there's a boy in my room. Why is never so much? Was that a dream that had to do with what you won? Yeah, you know, it, it, was, it was my first time, mm. I mean, on a VGMA platform. So, I mean, the whole VGMA effect with Kwame Eugene being on that platform for the first time was in my brains. And, and, and I, had, I had a difficult time letting it go. And the new artist of the year, I actually needed that award because. Um, um, it was a tight competition. Exactly. And it wouldn't, it wouldn't have been bad if it went to maybe Kim Promise or Kidi or, I mean, some of my brothers, I mean, either of them. Mm. But at the end of the day, this is new artist of the year. I want to be remembered that in, in our year, mm -hmm. I mean, I have to tell my kids that I beat Kidi. <laughs> <laughs> I beat Kidi and Kim Promise. Uh, yeah. I have to be able to tell my kids that that's what I was thinking of. Mm. And tell us, in my dream, someone is taking it away from I think, I think it was Kim Promise. I, I wasn't happy. I should, I should be a taller person. <laughs> Your greatest fear? My greatest fear? Mm. Um, to, to wake up one morning, I'm not this rock star. Yeah. Imagine I wake up and nah, I can go to the mall, nobody there. Rock star. <laughs> hey, there, man, sorry, yeah. Nah. 
I mean, I mean, I get people asking me, don't you get tired when people on your neck everywhere you go? I mean, you don't get time to come stand in a queue like us anymore. Don't you get tired? Like, oh, it is my job. Do you think I'll prefer to choose getting tired and not being recognized when I'm like you? <laughs> <laughs> I want to be recognized. Hello. <laughs> Oh my goodness, Maraski. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So the guy said, then go bow to my head. Mm. Almost, he wants him to stop this. The film, do you like campus in it, you know? <laughs> yes, I was just about asking that. Mm -hmm. Would you prefer fame over money? Hey, relax. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you know what I almost did? <laughs> I was about to, I was about to say, I go in class with famous. <laughs> I was about to mention it near like, hey, I said, <laughs> um, the thing is, the money can give me the fame. So, yeah, I mean, would you, would you prefer to choose being famous than you don't have anything in your pocket? I think that would be the worst experience in life. Wow. You, you'd be super popular, everybody knows you everywhere, but you have to pick Uber. <laughs> and nobody always, ah, you know, come here. I rock stand, I can I say, Oh, Kwame, do you love cars? 100%, I like super cars. I think my problem with cars is, eh, I grew up walking so much that, bro, obiti asia wa hasi. Yeah, you tell we do let go back in. So you you mean trotro like you? Me, I didn't even do much trotro. Hey. I remember I remember when I used to school around I mean East Legon, and I live all the way in Fadama. Me my mother so there, how now school? So, <laughs> so. Uzi can know so Uzi 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 Bemba Uzi Obaku school around Legon. So what what we used to do is I have to wake up very early in the morning, walk to La Paz, then I'll get car from La Paz to um, Shiashi. Then I'll get car from Shiashi to I think uh, UPS Junction. It used to be UPS Junction, IPS Junction. Then I will walk all the way there to school. Then sometimes I walk back. I remember the first time in school, I think I had 30 CDs on me. And I used, I used um, 10 CDs for transportation. And my first time in school, and there was a long queue on some fried rice like that. Everyone was buying. I was never going to buy some. <laughs> so I was on the queue too. So just before they'll be done serving three people, mm -hmm. I was the next. And, and, and I heard saying, I had one girl saying, oh, it brought me 20 cities. I'll, I'll, I'll give it to you when we get back to class. And you gave it to her? Not me. She was, <laughs> really, you're going to ask me for 20 cities. <laughs> That's all I have left. And, and the girl actually used all the 20 cities to buy rice. That was then, though. Mm. That means that's the price of the food. <laughs> <laughs> You can buy it. <laughs> I, I, I passed behind the shoulder, like, oh, Charlie. Wow. I had to walk some, some, I had to walk like about, I mean, five minutes away from the school to go and get Kenke, and it was cool. Mm -hmm. I got Kenke two cities. Wow. Got that was then. So, I mean, I've, I've, I've walked enough, and, and I remember the first time getting my, my, I mean, the biggest cash I've ever held, and it was a lot of money, and I was like, what am I buying first? I'm not buying a land or I'm buying a car. That's what I was thinking of. Or I'm buying a shoe. <laughs> because I also, I, I had to finish the whole of SHS with one shoe. Yeah. I remember it was a Jordan, so um, it, was, it was, yeah, it was Jordan, so it was strong. It was white, and, and because I, that it was the only shoe I had, we had to let the shoemaker blanco it for me. So they made it black. So I had to actually finish SHS with one shoe. So I told myself one day if I get money, you I'll buy, buy shoes. So now I have a lot of shoes. And I'm loving what you're wearing right and, now. And I, I don't want to walk anymore. I remember when I, I used to walk and I would see a young girl sitting in a nice Camry like that. 
and she, she'll, pull, she'll pull out the Windows app, then she's enjoying the AC, then my bag is on me like that, looking at her. I was like, very soon, opening it. <laughs> yeah, so when, when I had some small money, I started getting cars. I, I got my first Elantra, mm. and I realized um, um, Joey B's car was nicer than mine. Ah. <laughs> That's actually true. Really? He's like, ah, tell you, be careful. Uh, I have to get nicer car than Joey B. Uh, that means I have to work harder. I started doing Kwani Kwani, Wish Me Well, Angela, Obiato, Never Carry Less. Wow. And I was playing shows all over the place. I got more money. Pop myself a Camaro. That's it. And, and it, was, it was my dream to buy a Range Rover. Then I was like, I'm done. Mm -hmm. And they gave me Range Rover free. Woo! I mean, God has been listening to my prayers. He's <laughs> like, you are going to buy it regardless. You are going to buy it regardless. So let me give it to you for free. Aww. Shout out to God. Yeah. I mean, no, I mean, I also heard you, you, you used to walk a lot to the studio. I still do. Oh. But this would, the, that one was a longer distance. Walk to the studio? Yeah, walk to oh, the no, studio. Oh, no, 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 I have a studio in my, in my house. Oh, yeah. but I would want you to I share think, the I thought experience. you said I used to work a lot in the studio. No, walk. I want you to share the experience of walking to the oh, studio. Oh, that was from Panama to Israel. Do you know Israel? N where is Israel? Okay, Israel is around Tabora. Oh, okay. A lot of go up. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Tabora boys. Yeah, yeah, so Israel is around Tabora. Aladi. It's quite far. So, um, um, shout out to Teddy. He, he actually had to hold me down when I didn't have enough money on me. So all I used to have was, I would have to save up to like 300 CDs to go record. Wow. 300 Ghana to go record, and I have to save small, 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 small cost. Charlie, my mom is going to sell tomatoes in the market. And you think that tomatoes, now nah, the whole day she got 50 to 70, 70 CDs, no. She would, she would gather that 70 CDs, 50 CDs, up to 300 CDs, and say, Jacob recorded on your phone, I out to her. <laughs> no, she's not going to do that. She'll probably go and pay, I mean, the rest of my school fees, because I was always owing in school. Aww. So, but I, ha I wanted to do music, so I have to save the money by myself. And I'll take time, save money off my feeding money. Sometimes I have to work extra so that I can get to save some of the transportation money. Some of my transportation, I can get to save it. So. I saved it, and, and if I get to 300 CDs, that's all I have on me. I can't get a taxi or get a cab or get church off from here to Israel. That means I'm going to have shortage from my 300 CDs then. That means I have to set off early from Fadama. Mm. I have to walk from Fadama, go through Bombay to Nyameche, mm. to Tabora, number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, number six, then get to Alaji, then Alaji to Israel. Then I'll go and record. When I'm done recording, that is where, I mean, the pain starts because now I'm tired. Mm. I'm exhausted. But I have to walk back to Fadama. Oh, wow. Because then if you're in your hotel, mm -hmm. <laughs> and you know, I have to go back home. And I have to walk back. Sometimes I'll get home like 12. I remember um, um, I was, uh, um, um, I, I met some, some three guys on the way. They were like, hey, I'll phone, right? I said, boss. <laughs> Before I knew we go. Yeah, come on, don't I know that. So yeah. That that was what I have to go through with. Wow. I mean wow. studio work. Oh. I, I'm sure you now understand. I, I, I'm sure you now understand. I'm sure one day you probably get some flesh because uh, you did a lot of walking. You I don't need flesh. Do, you don't need flesh. Actually, you like the way need, you I try as much as possible now mm. not to get flesh because okay. um I, I would, I know mm. a time will come, I'll probably get the flesh I need. Because flesh, you know, I'm getting to afford this pizza, I'm, I'm buying <laughs> lasagna, and I'm doing this. I'm, I'm, I'm eating like, I mean, I'm eating good. Yeah. That means if I, if I don't take good care of myself, you by the time I'll be 40, I can't be like a chamu kwame. Do, well. do you get, I'll probably be like his DJ. If <laughs> 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 you've seen his DJ. MK. Oh my goodness. Wow. <laughs> okay, I wish we could go on and on, but of course, Kami <laughs> Yiji is so exciting to talk to. But hey, when we are back from this break, there's more. It's the Darren Avia Show. It's the Darren Avia Show. And now, welcome to the Wheel of Misfortune. You get three spins. 
where you can win 500 cities a spin. Or you can win a fantastic, beautiful prize of absolute misfortune. When you spin and you lose, Sikano, ah, shit. Welcome back to the Dorina Vio Show, and now we are going to play a game. <laughs> Do you have any number yet? <laughs> Today I dreamt oh. of a little number. Oh, tell me about it. <laughs> but the number no come through. <laughs> <laughs> so I just want to give it a try here. Okay. Um, number. number two. Number two, look under your chairs. Number two, who is number two today? Number two, hey, number two! Come, come! Well, Varaiski, I've been waiting to get a lady, and I have a beautiful lady here. What's your name, darling? I'm Winifred. Winifred. Okay, so Winifred, um, <clears throat> uh, we are on prank call. But of course, um, game over is certainly, you've lost everything. 500 Ghana CDs, you spin three times and you win 1,500 Ghana CDs. Wow. That's a lot of money, you know. Yes. <laughs> Ta-da, you win something and you win something for your audience as well. And then 500 Ghana CDs with a red marker crossed means negative 500. Obviously, you lost that as well. Are you ready to spin? Yes. Are you ready? Very ready. First, are we ready? Let's take our first spin. See what I told, what I shot you. What I spin, what I found you. What I like spin on my learning. Baby, step in a circle and dance to the beat. What I enjoying, kid. Monica Benedicta or Caro. Or maybe my sherry coco. Baby, step in a circle and dance to the beat. So, Let's take our second spin. from Samsung. Let's give it up for her once again. <laughs> Faraski, she won, no? I didn't win. You didn't win. I think she has a last chance, right? Yeah. So does that mean when it's game over, we cancel that one too? Hey, so you see, you have one last spin, and uh, well, let's take that last one. <laughs> <laughs> to win another gift from Samsung. Let's give it up for her. So Winifred gets to win two beautiful or amazing gifts from Samsung. And guess what? You all get 
to win something from Samsung as well. Baroski, are we part of them? I think I'm part of the audience. <laughs> well, we are part of the audience, and well, thank you so much, Winifred. Congratulations, and uh, um, I wish you all the best. If you're ready, ladies and gentlemen, Kwame Eugene! Oh, 